Hi everyone, it's Rob the Weller Hair Guy over on Instagram here today to introduce this week's Pineapple Chat. This week, Stu and I had an uplifting and inspiring conversation with Maxine MacArthur from MW Education. Maxine is also a freelance hairstylist, which I have known for many, many years. We took a look at how she got into the industry and how she cultivates her creativity. We hope you enjoy watching as much as we did chatting. Yeah. No, I want to hear all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you'll hear it in a minute once I've got this. I need to pull the blind down. It's the sun has now just moved <laughs> to the wrong bit. I've been dodging it the whole time, and now it's just moved to the wrong, wrong. Uh, oh, you're turning into David Bowie. I thought you were going for the Bowie look there with a lightning bolt on your face. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's, <laughs> what it was. that's what it was. It's my Harry Potter scar coming to life. Um, <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to uh, Being More Pineapple, the Pineapple Chat, uh, with me, Rob, the Weller Hair Guy, him, Stu, Stu, <laughs> 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 I don't have a catchy uh, name, yeah, I don't have a catchy name, Stu the Wrist Man, <laughs> and to this week's guest we have Maxine MacArthur, hi Maxine, hi, how are we? We are doing fan dabby dozy. <laughs> good to hear, good to hear. Yeah. How are things with you? Yeah, good, good. Just stuck in the house, but trying to stay sane. Um, it's nice to look out in the pretty snow at the minute. Um, yeah, so all good. Better for, better for seeing you guys, to be honest. A little bit more interaction. Yeah, 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 <laughs> definitely. It's, um, I've read a thing on the, in a, in, on, a news article the other day and it was saying that people are becoming more and more disinterested in doing anything socially because like we've now been in lockdowns for so long that doing anything sort of social is like I really can't be bothered like I'm don't, not doing a quiz I'm not doing anything compared to the first lockdown where everybody was like yes we still got so much to talk about now everybody's yeah. just like no exactly. yeah it's like it's like the computer says no thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, definitely, definitely. So hopefully we'll find lots to be able to talk about and, um, yeah, sort of get to know you a little bit more, really. So well, hey. as with every guest, because we've got such a wide variation of audience between, obviously, myself with having the, the massive hair community and then Stu with his really diverse community of friends which um interact the and interacts with as well can you start off by telling us a little bit about who you are where you work what you're doing all of those sorts of things ah so as you guys realize by the introduction at the beginning um my name's maxine um a hairdresser and i am part of the well passionistas and the uk color director for an education company called MW and I'm a freelance hairdresser. Yeah, so I'm based in Glasgow in Scotland. Um, probably tell with the accent. If you can't make me out, I do apologise. I don't know if Rob can put subtitles on or not. <laughs> but just go Instagram with it. Instagram automatically fine. does it now, so I'm sure we'll be able to make it happen. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> oh, I love it. See, well, down there, I'm sure there'll be a subtitle option. It's fine. Um, <laughs> so... <laughs> So yeah, that's about me in a nutshell at the moment. I'm just kind of doing some work with um, some colleges and kind of keeping students motivated and yeah, just kind of trying to see them and inspire them through these hard times where I couldn't even imagine being a student at the moment. So things like this, it's just, it's just a great way of keeping the kind of future talent within our industry a little bit kind of still going, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, I love it. I love it. I think that's what everybody still needs, and especially anybody in any learning situation at the minute. I think, you know, there's been lots of things said in the media about like this generation of, we'll say kids in general, but this generation of kids being like the stupid generation because their ed education has been disrupted so much. But I know just from knowing you anyway, and I know that like with me and the my two kids, you know, we put a lot of effort into um, 
enriching the learn, even though it's you know from a distance, shall we say? So, I think they the the media and things like that can put this real negative spin on it. But I actually I think that there's going to be a lot more creative people coming out of it because of the way that everybody's had to be creative around how they do things just from general learning. Oh my god, I totally agree. I mean, these kids. Um the students themselves, even the lecturers, to be honest, the lecturing staff as well at the college are super excited. It's yeah. they're saying they feel like they're students again, you know. So yeah. and for somebody like myself, I, I, as you know, Rob, I'm a total hair geek. I love my job. I could not imagine doing anything else in the world. So for me to have people that are super keen and like proper little sponges sitting there like total eyes beaming like they're a little cat, like, oh, <laughs> it's like that. That's what it's like every time. And it, it's it's so wonderful to see because if anything in these in these times, they could so easily use the excuse, well, I'm doing nothing and I'm used to doing nothing, but they're not. They're totally grabbing the bulls by the horns. And I tell you now, at the end of this, I think we're going to end up with a whole new level of a whole new level of students coming out at the end of it. I think it's going to be the kind of progression at every industry, no matter what you're studying. I think they're just they're just going to have that little bit more determination to grow more. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> now the question is, when you were in college, what, uh-huh. what you or what started you to go down this road of hairdressing and wanting to be as creative? Why why was it this lane? Ah, right. So, well, <laughs> this is this is probably going to sound really weird. Um, hairdressing is not the only thing I've done. Um, Rob will probably get a little bit of a surprise there. <laughs> oh, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Um, so what had happened was when I was younger, I knew for a fact that I wasn't one for, I was always into kind of like art, although I wasn't good at sketching, I was always really interested in the colour side of painting and things like that, I loved it. Um, I was always a very visual person, very hands-on, loved art, PE, like woodwork, everything like that, I just couldn't stay still. So for me, a practical job was definitely for me. And then it must have been when I was a kid, uh, the whole hair thing started when my mum, when I was younger, I used to have really long hair, really like proper down to my waist. And for school photographs and stuff, I used to hate it. But my mum used to put my hair in rags where she'd tear up an old bed sheet yeah. and she'd wet my hair and wrap it around it, wrap it back and tie it. And I got up in the morning, she'd, you'd take them out and it looked like dreadlocks and then she'd split them into what made me look like a poodle. Um, honestly I, honestly I looked like a proper puzzle it was mad I wanted to get you some photos um and before you knew it, all the kids in the housing estate in, Gla- in Glasgow where it was um all their parents were like oh my god I want my kids hair like that so before you knew it my mom although she had no hair death experience the only thing she could do was rags she was doing it to every kid in the housing state for their school photos and for parties and things like that so over time before you knew it I kind of just watching her doing it learned how to do it and I thought oh this is actually quite cool that you can do this with no appliances just a bit of water a bit of cloth and a bit of time yeah. and then I kind of went through the school and everything like that and I was before you knew it I was the one in the class that was flatting everyone's hair and things like that just for something to do and then when it came to me leaving school, I had applied for hairdressing at college and I'd left school and it turned out that um, the college was overbooked to students, so I went for an apprenticeship. Oh. Got the apprenticeship, which was great. However, there was about a year's wait until the person qualified before I started. So me being me wanting to do a practical job, um, I actually done a pre-apprenticeship and painting and decorating. So technically I went from painting walls to painting hair. Whoa, <laughs> wow, no, I did not even know that. No, I know, I didn't think you'd do that, Rob. No. <laughs> like, it went now with the whole colour thing, like yeah, liking yeah, art, yeah. Like, liking things like actual mixing paint together. Yeah, done painting and decorating, so it comes in handy. Oh, wow. Wow. We should have had you down here this week, Kate, not blooming flat. <laughs> <laughs> 
Uh, just so you know, my my brother's actually in the process of going to be they're going to be selling the selling the flat. So they're doing like doing a bit of a makeover and a spruce up to be able to make it like ready to sell, basically. So yeah. Yeah, nice. Oh, it's a shame I'm not looking for it, but you came round and giving your hand, me mask, and me visor, and everything. All yeah. <laughs> I love the fact that as well within that um your mum was probably the original Jojo Bows. You... Yeah, my mum is totally the original inspiration. That and of course then um, so if you met my mum, I tell you now, Rob, you'd probably just be like, wow, the, the apple when they say the apple has it fall far from the tree, it didn't fall at all. <laughs> <laughs> She's still Honestly, holding it. My mum's worse than me. She makes me look quiet. <laughs> <laughs> and she's got this long hair and it's like bright purple she's had it like bright red for as oh. long as I can remember it's like she used to get the odd highlight and uh, our best mate's done her hair for years and years and years and so as far as I as far as I can remember it was my mum in the kitchen getting her hair done by our mate who's the hairdresser and he just turned up with this big suitcase full of stuff and yeah, like 16 years later, here's me doing the exact same thing for a shirt. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Like, literally love it. Love so it pretty like. sense to my mom, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Wow. Wow. I mean, the first time that we sort of met anyway was when you entered into um, exposure competition, wasn't it? Oh, no, actually, I, I remember meeting you before that. Oh, <laughs> really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No, so I had, I had, I had, I had, that's probably the first time I had a conversation, like a proper conversation. Um, but I can remember actually, it was after I'd done my apprenticeship, my salon closed down just as I was doing my barter. And so I had to go back to college to get my certificate. And whilst I was at college, we took a trip to the Wales well Studios in Manchester. And so we were on the college introduction course for Cut and Colour, which was, over the two days, I think day one was yourself and Dan, and I think day two was yourself and Laura. Yeah. Um, and I have to admit, you stood out the most, because I totally loved the fact that you were wearing a little dicky bow. I will never forget that. <laughs> dicky bow. Love there, you, there you go, our little uh, pineapple viewers. I went for a phase of wearing a dicky bow every single day. Yeah. You looked proper dapper though. <laughs> I loved it. You look like, honestly like there was like, it got to the point where of course there was yourself and Rob stands on the stage, but of course you had other guys at the side. And instantly I was just like, oh he's cool. Yeah. yeah. Like, he's really yeah. cool. He's like the cool <laughs> guy in the bunch. Totally. There's a <laughs> first for everything. <laughs> Say that again. What? And there's a first for everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Being the cool. Oh guy. not at all. He's he's totally cool. <laughs> yeah, well, there we go. See, Stu, I am cool. Hmm. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I, re I, rem I do remember, I do remember, like I say, um, with, like I say, exposure, because you did a really great job at, with exposure. And um, I think a lot of, obviously, you're really inspired anyway. Do you know what I mean? But a lot of that really helped with the momentum for your career for anybody that doesn't really know exposure is a competition that well run which is for college students and anybody that's doing an apprenticeship where you create a cut and colored look um and it's yeah about finding the sort of the next up and coming hairdressers um and you get winners and they get like different experiences and goodie uh, goodie bags and money to be able to spend on education and things like that so I remember, like I say, sort of really meeting you properly there. Um, uh, and that's really done a lot for, I think, for confidence and for your career. So where did that take you from sort of that, really? Oh, my God. So exposure is something that's really close to my heart. Um, so exposure is really, definitely close to my heart because I took part in it, first of all, when I was doing my level two and I was fast track, so I was doing everything within a 10 month program. Um, so when I'd done my level two, I entered and I got to the Scottish Regional Heats and I was like, oh my God, this is incredible. It was amazing. You get to see some incredible shows along the way. Um, you get to see the work of other people at the same level as you. As you and everyone's different interpretations on what they, their version of a trend is, which is amazing. 
Um, some people go very artistry, some people go kind of avant-garde, some people go very fashion. And the fact that you need to create a total look instantly it's making you go out of your comfort zone and start thinking about the total aesthetic rather than just the canvas of hair that you're used to. Um, and then the year later, um, I get asked by the college if I wanted to do it again. And the way they've done it is they changed it that year. So it was open to all level sixes and level threes, and which is obviously um, VTCT and SVQ. So anybody that was sitting at a higher level had the opportunity and exposure. So you had to do it first for an adult head. And then it was judged by um, loads of different lecturers within the college. And then the top five were chosen because of course there's only five from each college allowed. Yeah. And I got to the Scottish final and then my name was called out to go to London and I was like, oh my God. So I really missed the old well of London, the old well of studios. I was devastated when that left, but the new one is living the, the new one is amazing. I love the living room. But um it was incredible to go on this amazing journey and meet so many people from all over and be in a room with people that I had only ever seen in press magazines like Hairdresser Journal. And it was just incredible. It was an incredible, incredible experience. And I'd highly recommend everyone and anyone to go for it because competition is not going to be for everyone but if you can find out early if it's for you or if it's not it's a win-win really um exposure from there took me on my kind of took my my brain on a little journey um which kind of made me realize that the kind of creative side of hairdressing the show side of hairdressing the session side the education side was something that I wanted to pursue which for me I'd never really thought about at the time um, and then, of course, the final came and I was judged by Ruth from Hairdresser Journal. There was Jake Unger from Hob. There was, God, there was, there was like, it was, it was an amazing, amazing lineup. I was just sitting there and all. And then when they called my name out, I'm sitting there. And my twin brother's a makeup artist and he was my makeup artist at the time. He was sitting there with me. And they're like, they called out the number, because of course it's anonymous, and then they shouted out my name, and I was like, eh? <laughs> <laughs> and my brother was just like, stand up, and I was like, nah, that can't be right. <laughs> and he's like, stand up. So I then had to stand up on the stage, and I was just like, it was like a total deed in the headlights. So I was like, what, 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 where am I going, who am I going to, what, what happened? Like, but from there on, honestly, that totally gave me an amazing confidence boost. It gave me so much more confidence, not just in what I'd done, but me as a person, because of course that's the first time I'd really had to do any sort of presenting work, anything like that, presenting mood boards. So for me, I thought to myself, the feedback that I got was that they could see how passionate I was, they could see my personality. And for me, I was like, did I show that? I thought it was bland, you know? So I was like, it kind of made me believe a little bit more in me and not just my ability. Um, it is totally incredible. But to be fair, it's always going to be the first award I ever won. It's got pride of place and, and my bedroom. Oh, oh, so I've got it all wrapped up. It's so nice. I'm still, it's all wrapped up until one day when I open a salon and it's going to get pride of place right at the top because it's my first one. Wow, Roger, that is so going, cool. I think going back to, you know, you said when you were going through the heats and you were seeing so many people and like there was so much inspiration. When I went through university, you do have that moment of being like, oh my goodness, there's so much more to see and to like somebody else's opinion or someone's thing. So when I went through fashion and the textiles design course, I was sat with people who literally were have made such an impact on why I do what I do. Um, yeah. It, was there anybody or any, like, people you were there with or you saw on the way which made you either go, yeah, I know what I want to do, or do I want to do this? Do you know what I mean? That whole... I'm the kind of person that I look at everything and I'm... I like to think I'm a very positive hairdresser. I'm not one for... It really frustrates me that a lot of people within the industry don't necessarily always have nice things to say um 
Whereas for me, I might look at something and go, that's not what I would do, but the beauty in that is incredible. Like, there was this, I'll never forget it. I, don't, I never got to meet the girl. Um, it was at the, I'm sure it was at the final. And I never got I never got to meet her and I don't know her name, but I can remember, I'll never forget the look. It was incredible. So it was like black and white. If you think of um, like Sons of Anarchy, like Gemma, that kind of rough, hunky look. The girl looked sick. Um, and it was like black and white. And then before you know it, the minute, the minute she started curling it from absolutely nowhere, this is where my fascination at colour placement came. Because out of absolutely nowhere, it suddenly this kind of mushroom shape, just as she was like curling it, it suddenly became like peacock tone. So it went from black and white to suddenly bits of copper coming through and that really lovely turquoise and teal. It was stunning, stunning. Yeah. It got to the point where I'd stopped, stopped doing what I was doing, turned my blow dryer off and I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> and that was me like a student just standing there gobsmacked by another student's work it was honestly incredible absolutely yeah. incredible yeah it is having that, that, that instantly made me think about the placement of colour yeah exactly because like I've got friends who I've known since uni so it's been over 10 years now and I'm still affected by some of the things they they created and just being like where did that where, like how did you get there and it just like yeah. it just pushes you like you said it inspires you to go oh oh here we go then there, there is yeah, like, exactly the whole thing of going like you said I had a friend in uni who did completely opposite to me she was tailoring she was all of it, and I was knitwear bright colors like every color under the sun and she said Love to me when they went to I'm gonna be honest with you and she, we were having like a group chat about everyone's work and she goes just going to be honest with you, I don't like what you've done, but I appreciate why you've done it. And everyone like behind went, and I turned around and said, no, I appreciate that. You can see why I've done it, but it meant there was someone else to like make me really believe why I did it. And yeah. that's, that's another side of like, when you get immersed in these, these situations that you're pushed outside of your comfort zone, like you said, you went to the style and did all that type of stuff. It really can like solidify why you do it. And you can see exactly. just by talking to you now, your passion and your enthusiasm and the fact that you can remember something from way back. That oh is, my God, yeah. <laughs> you, you do that like little flutter of going, ooh. Because like, I can remember going to London Graduate Fashion Week, like you did. We, we had it so that every, every university put forward uh, X amount of students. We all went to London Fashion Week. We did a uni show and then people got picked. Oh my God, that sounds incredible. And it was insane. It was absolutely insane. Like a weekend, a long ass weekend in uh, in London at Earl's Court. And um, we were immersed and we all thought like, oh my God, it's amazing. And then like you did, we went and saw other people's shows and you sat there just going. And I, like I said, there's one girl, I can never remember her name, but I think she was from like Loughborough University or somewhere up north and her collection, it had it read like I was just like that, and you like you did. You just stop and you just go, and then we went like seek seek her out and found a portfolio, and like it just makes you go, oh, oh my god! And those moments yeah. stick with you all the time, don't they? Oh, definitely, definitely. I mean, it's things like that that you can relate to every in any industry. Do you know what I mean? And I love the fact that your industry is totally cross referenced in ours because I'm. Like obviously, you guys have to do a lot more work with fashion and stuff as well as as do we. So, but I totally get that. It, it is absolutely. Was I? I can remember going it's to. It's breathtaking when you see that. When oh, you, and the fact that you can still remember the exact feeling that yeah. you had at the time, and it can overtake you even this yeah. many years later. Yeah, exactly. Amazing. I can remember going to a few salon internationals with Rob when he was sort of like starting off and we would go to massive hair shows and I didn't have any like I didn't have any it was like a trip to go to London that's so all I was going to have a look but even <laughs> me who was not into hairdressing like anything like that I was just like blown away because you're just like oh this is what you can do with hair it was it, it yeah like you say those moments just stick with you and like I expect Rob's got plenty of those as well oh, sure do oh, no, doubt. Do. no doubt yeah no doubt I want to hear all of this <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll hear it in a minute once I've got this 
I need to pull the blind down. So the sun has now just moved <laughs> to the wrong bit. I've been dodging it the whole time, and now it's just moved to the wrong, wrong. Uh, oh, you're turning into David Bowie. I thought you were going for the Bowie look there with a lightning bolt on your face. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's what it was. That's what it was. Is my Harry Potter scar coming to life? Um, <laughs> he's he's a magician. Cool. He lost his cool then. Went from Bowie to Harry Potter. Oh, oh, I don't care. Oh, I don't know. I love both. I'm on Rob's side with this. I'm a Harry Potter fan. Okay, I'm cool. a big David Bowie fan. Oh, <laughs> um, so, <laughs> so, um, right. So back, it just, just put me off a little bit now. My eyes have now just got to readjust. <laughs> so with, with all that um, in mind, like the... The next step on from your journey, you actually moved to London for um, a, a little bit as well and started working for a company down in London. I think that's really given you um, a different side to your creativity because it's a, the company you work for has got a, a really s strong ethos. Um, so how did that, how has that impacted you and your sort of creative mind in your, well, your signature really? Um, so for me... A lot of the creative work that I had done before moving was things that I'd done and like for example when I'd done the MCP and um, that's when I first I had started playing around prior to that with photography I had a little group of photographers makeup artists stylists things like that that I had um, got together in Scotland and after doing the MCP we were like totally that made me look at colour and a whole whole new, whole new light. It completely changed my ethos and my outlook as well. So that then gave me the confidence to move. And for me, I always used to, I used to love flicking through the hair just a journal on my break. On my break, on their break, most people, the stylists would be outside having a smoke or outside on their phone or whatever. I was sitting in the staff room looking at Creative Head and Pro Hairdressing Magazine and Hairdresser Journal. Me too. And reviewing all my reviewing all the notes that my boss had put in, although I didn't have to, I had them all in my pocket and I'd just sit and review them all and see if I could get a vision for them. Yeah. And one of the companies that always stood out to me, and amongst of course Tony and Guy and Sassoon, the one after that was Hob. It's I always seen Ocken Kinesi on the front cover, and work in the front cover, and you see them inside the magazine. And I used to look at the aesthetic and I'd be like, that is just, for me, it wasn't, it was structural but textured, which was in between my train and which was the soon meets and Tony and Guy. So that almost sat the kind of perfect harmony for me. So I was like, oh, this is different. And I thought to myself, do you know what? I had been let go from a salon that I worked in um, just before Christmas time that year. And... I was like, do you know what? I'm going to see this on the journal. Now, I'd never looked for a job in the journal before in my life. And I went online. And I saw that there was a whole salons opening in Manchester. And I was like, right, well, I know Manchester very well because I've been travelling there for about six, seven months doing the NCP. And, of course, all the education I'd done before that. So I was like, I'd happily live there. Um, and I got in contact with, I applied for the job and the franchisee um, at the time was Shabba Hussein. Um, love Shabba, I love my wee Shabba. Um, and so I went down and I'd done a trade test in the lead salon and he says to me, like, you've got the job, we'd love to bring you in at this level, everything like that. And I was just like flabbergasted. I was a bit like, oh my God. Oh my God, I saw this guy on stage and now he's hiring me. Oh my God. And for me, that was an achievement on its own. And then when I started in the salon, it started in, I started in Leeds because the Manchester salon had been delayed in opening and he wanted me to be there as soon as possible to get in with the company ethoses and the background and how the company worked, everything like that, get comfortable before transitioning over. Yeah. So that was all fine. Done about four months, four, four or five months in Leeds before going to Manchester. Um, and when I was in Manchester, um, I was speaking to one of the area managers that came from London and she was saying to me, Get me down to the academy here or something like that. And I was like, 
be allowed. She's like, it's, it's a national a national academy. It's, it's free for staff. Oh well, I I made myself known. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I was like, at the time I, I I'm obviously self employed, so I used to just be like, right, this course is on, and every month they done um every single month on a set day there was it was the staff um creative education seminar called Hop Jam. Yeah. And I went to that every single month. So where all the all the staff at Hob from all different salons would come, jam together and just create some amazing cuts and colours. Um, for me, it was always tricky, though, because trying to get a model to Manchester to London, then I got in with a model scout and started getting this and stuff, which was cool. Um, and then before you know it, one night I was sitting there, it was myself, Sean Nolan, Nestor, sitting, and before you know it, I can walk down. And me being me, I... I was like, anybody would have thought that I was in the military. I literally stood up straight from sat up position. I was just like rigid. I was like, oh my God. Um, and he comes right up to me and goes, oh, I don't know who you are. And I was like, oh, well, I'm Maxine. It's nice to meet you. <laughs> and it was just like, what the hell are you from? I was like, Manchester. He's like, oh, you're the only one that comes down. I was like, yeah. And then before you know it, every time you've seen me, at first they'll say, what's your name again? What's your name again? And then before you know it, he walked by me one day and was like, Maxine. And I was like, oh. So then I got the opportunity to move to London after um, one of the other directors, Clive, had pestered me for about a year. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And I thought, do you know what? It's something I've always wanted to do was London. And... He had, it turns out that he'd spoke to Ockin and offered me a position within the Camden Salon, which wow. was incredible. So yeah. it was in the flagship salon in Camden, which was obviously harmonious for the academy. I was hired only as a stylist technician at senior level. And then, again, like that, working alongside, like I knew Sean Nolan really well. He was a really good friend of mine before I even moved down there. You know, it was great. Yeah. And he was like, he was like my big brother in the city. It was amazing. That unknown city, but I had me man, so it was fine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and before you know it, he was like, oh, do you fancy assisting me on this? Like, and I was, me being me, I was like, hell yeah, I'm there. Like, don't even ask me. Just tell me where to be and when and I'm there. And then it got, there was one night, I think it was for Hope Jam, he said he couldn't do it. And he was like, can you do this? And I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do that. Now, I had taught and being part of creative teams with like Rainbow Room International and things like that. But for me, Hob was a whole new, it was a whole new level. And then after that, um, I was actually offered a position. Um, I was, well, I was actually recommended by Pete Burkhill for the styling position after he left and went to Josh Woods. And Sean Nolan was just like, no, if she's doing anything, it's going to be colour. Like, we're, we're not putting a pair of straighteners in her hands. <laughs> hands. You're given a tent brush and you're given a head, and that's it. Yeah. And um, yeah, and then before you know, I started doing education, and then before you know, it, Sean was ended up head of technical, and myself, Kelly, was number two. And um, so then getting to do a lot more work at the Wellness Studios in London, MCP. It was really strange. I'll never forget, I'd done two MCPs and my colour educator from college was on them. <laughs> she was on one MCP, and myself and Sean were doing the presentation. Hello. That's definitely one of the most bizarre things I've ever came across in my life. I was like, I feel like we need to swap places. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full circle moment, isn't it? It's one of those full circle moments where you're just like, wow, this is now come full circle, and now I am teaching the teacher. <laughs> yeah, and it was amazing because... Again, like that, she was the kind of reason when I was at college um, that I wanted to do my MCP because she kind of seen something in me that I didn't even see myself, that I was a total geek. And at the time, I just thought, oh, maybe I'm just excited, you know. <laughs> and before you know it, she I can remember her when I was doing my level three, she showed me her MCP folder and she's like, this is my Bible. Yeah. Like, do not touch it. I will turn the pages myself. I was like, okay. <laughs> And I was like, what are the attachments to this folder? And then, of course, once it opened, I was just like, oh, holy moly, this is me. This, I need this. And, yeah, it was just really bizarre that 
she then followed me and she always supported me on my career to the point where when we used to do, we used to do a yearly show when I was at Hob, um, called Hob Uncut. Yeah. And the last two or three that I worked on um, with the company, uh, I got her tickets and she came down to London for it every time. Nice. Oh, still showing support after all those years from like being in college and then, and then, uh, yeah, seeing you down there and then being able to see you at your sort of uh, doing your thing, really. So I think oh, that's... definitely. I, I just it was I, nice to take it was it's amazing what you take from one person's aesthetic and kind of grow it to your own that's what I loved about Hob is it was so everything was all about an element of structure texture wearability and um, it was all about a wow factor yeah so for me for somebody who is so fundamentally over everything it's ridiculous yeah. um <laughs> I mean, that's that's your core structure for anything. If you don't know your fundamentals, you're never going to be able to be creative. Yeah. Um, so for me, the ethos behind them gave me an element of confidence that I didn't even realise I had myself. Yeah, yeah. Which gave me, because of course, the fact that I'd done some soon training in Tony and Guy, and the fact that that was almost like a mixture of two ethos together that kind of almost came together like perfect harmony yeah. and it just totally sang to me and for me the fact that I could go to the structural element or the texture element or go slap bang in the middle although they're all they all kind of intertwine in ways they've all got a completely different aesthetic yeah. and really it was all about individuality and a mood and how you feel on that day and the tribe that you're trying to create to then this is where you're at, what you're going to do, what's the design behind it, and go for it. So it kind of gave me a lot of creative experience and working within an umbrella that had an amazing creative team with all different ideas, it kind of pushed you in ways that I never thought, like, for example, I never thought I'd be able to let someone else cut my hair, color, hair color for yeah. trend vision. That freaked me out. I was like, right, how much hair are you leaving me? What are you doing with the haircut? And like, what are you doing? And Jake was like, I'm just having a look now. And I was like, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and then before you know, I was like, do you know what? I'm going to take a step back. I'll let you do your thing because you're a cutter. And I was just colour it afterwards. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fit around it, fit around it. I mean, I remember I remember taking Jake through a uh, uh, Trem vision as well. It's like the first place, yeah. like, first time I met him as well. But for anybody that just, just, I know we've been talking about like lots of these companies um, uh, and businesses quite a bit now. But just so that people who are not hairdressers get, yeah, what, who we're talking about. You, like lots of people will know Sassoon because it's just iconic anyway, and lots of people will know Tony and Guy from the high street, and they're they're structurally very different in the sense yeah. of one very classic forms and the other one like you say is very rock and roll texture loads of movement and stuff like that so hob really sits in the middle of those two and when we talk about hob being right up there yes they might be very london based with um you know venturing a little bit further north as well but you know Ukin is a multiple time head british hairdresser of the year so like yeah. we're not talking about oh this is just a, another salon chain we're talking about a salon chain which is actually really really credible with somebody driving it that is at the peak of their performance as well so oh my god i know it's amazing i mean it's it's mad because i still love Ukin. i mean i was on the phone to him just for christmas um although i've been away from the company for over a year now um I love the fact that I know that if I phoned him and said to him, hey, I'm coming to London, to fancy coffee. And I know that if he's not in Japan or whatever he is, floating all over the world, the way he usually is, yeah. um, he's so grounded. It's incredible. For a man that has knowledge, the impact he's had on our industry, and in, not just in Britain, but in the world, yeah, yeah. how much of an amazingly humble man he actually is. Mm -hmm. It was so incredible. And... It's mad because at first I used to be really scared to the idea of him before I met him, just because of his boss man, you know. Um, still call him that right now. I've seen him. I'm like, hi, boss man. Um, <laughs> but things like that, for somebody who has who's had the amazingly massive impact globally on 
our industry for some is so ridiculously humble. Yeah. Honestly, he's one of one of the most influential people that I think I've met for the fact that he's super approachable. There's no, no such thing as a stupid question. Um, there's no right or wrong answer. He used to say there's only a better answer. Wow, that's a really good way of thinking about things. Yeah, really he's good. like, so there's not, not a wrong answer, but there might be a better one. Yeah, yeah. That's what always stuck to me, Ken. It was always, it was always a positivity. Which is but incredible. It's challenging at the same time, isn't it? Like it challenges yeah. you to think a little bit more as well. It's and it's not saying that what you said, like you just said, what the the answer you've given is a wrong one, but actually, have you thought about there being more to it than just that? Like, because we can get as creatives, we can sometimes find ourselves in that little like rabbit hole of this is what I'm doing and then you forget just to branch out even slightly to then yeah. see like what else could maybe help to influence and make things possibly 10 times better oh definitely I mean that's why I love doing a mood board like that just if ever I get tunnel vision I do mood boards regularly um and it kind of makes me whenever I'm coming up with like say an aesthetic like for example I'd, like when I, I entered Train Vision last year and this is soon image of the year competition last year, both of them had separate mood boards. Yeah. Just to make sure that the two of them had completely different backgrounds and different stories that I'd created for them. And a mood board stops me from instantly going to my go-to style, which I might love. It's an aesthetic yeah. that I might love or a favourite eyes with the trends going on in the world at the minute. But it kind of pushes me to branch out and realise there's more than one branch on a tree hunt, you know? <laughs> like, there's more branches and the branches got branches. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. And then, like, that was, yeah, we always had that within uni and, like, I've taken that forward of going, you if you've got that initial idea, then you've got to try umpteen different things to then figure out whether that first one was the right one or if there was something more to explore to develop because I can remember having just folded when we were designing you had to just do they would say you have to do hundreds to get the 10 you need and it was oh definitely you never know you might go back to that first idea you had but you might find something better along the way that's why they call it a journey like everything and anything everything and anything we take our mind through whether it's coming a random project or whether it's DIY stuff in the house for you to even think about the fact that oh I want my kitchen done like this doesn't need to be here doesn't need to be built it could be anything okay. everything and anything that we do is our mind goes on a journey to take us from that idea to actually make it real life so the journey that it takes on before you know it you end up changing the cabinets and changing the door handles and everything else that goes along with it before you know it you can either end up with the same thing or you can end up with something completely different a total journey exactly. life's an adventure oh god <laughs> and i just think sometimes people are sometimes your initial thought can be the one and then your journey is the journey to like you're sort of working backwards of going why did I choose that and how am I going to get there? And that was, that's what I've done a few times with the, like, my, of going, that's where, that's where it is. How am I getting there? But you work backwards and then you really find out why you chose to do that. But then. Yeah, it's like going like, one step out. forward and three steps back to get oh, to the ideal location. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And you like, your initial idea, you're like, okay, it's this and this, but then you've made this and this from being this small to like, huge humongous with yeah. so many things and you fleshed it out and then you can talk to people like you have done with us why you've chosen to do it why you've gone there and that journey of just sort of like oh this person has stuck with me this is why I do this and then I think that's what's more sometimes for me and I don't know if it's the same with you is more important than that end goal because actually what you learn on the way it's a lot more valuable because you could literally go from A to B and be like oh there's A to B we're done but if you do this and go back and all yeah. around, but then if you do then, a, to b, a, a to b you might end up with full alphabet in between oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you, know what I mean? you might end up with full alphabet and the whole numbering system in there as well yeah definitely 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 um so 
with being on the journey, you are still on your journey. And to bring it right up to date now, you obviously work for MW McDonald Waterfall in the education side of it, as well as being freelance. So because you're the job you is so education driven, um, how do you see like education generally? I mean, you, you can really isolate into hairdressing because that is obviously what you what you're really good at. But education into the industry, how why is it so important to stay educated? For me, if I'm honest, if I had left college and I hadn't been inspired by someone at a higher level, like higher educated than me. She was a master culinary expert. And just her showing me her version of about her Bible um, at MCP folder, that then inspired me to want to be better for myself. I would not be where I am right now if it wasn't for education. I mean, I lumped done my level two and level three. And afterwards, I literally, I was working in a salon and after paying my dig money, and my expenses to work, everything else got saved up. And I had the Wella education booklet from, I don't even know how many years ago. Yeah. Um, and I was looking through it and I was circling this one, this one, this one. And for me, I then realized that I was clearly drawn more to color. Although I'm a stereotype, I do cut in the salon as well and I have a good cut knowledge, but my, I definitely think my individual forte is more color based. Um, I definitely would not, if it wasn't for education, I would not have had the courage to go and work for a company like Hob. It wasn't until after I'd done my MCP that I thought, you know what, I could do this. I think I could at least have the guts. It's going to give me at least the confidence to go for the interview yeah. if I got an interview. Yeah. Um, but if I, if I didn't in any way do education and further myself, I definitely would not have had the confidence that a level three hairdresser I could just go for that, let alone even working for a company like that, doing the in-house education as well as a lot of education at Wella. So regardless of what level you're at, education is definitely key. I mean, education totally gets me through lockdown. I mean, I've got the yearly subscription to Sassoon Online. Yeah. You've got the... You've, you've got the, the well education online is incredible. I love it. You've got, but the minute Robert Eaton's looks like that one, I was like, oh my God, oh my God, Robert's on it. Right. I, I need to see this. Um, so things like education is definitely something. And if you want to, what's the, I'm trying to think of the best way to word this. If you see yourself for progression levels, whether it's progressing up a level in the salon, you want to progress into management, you want to progress into creative work, competition work, session work, any way that you choose, or if you decide you want to become an educator. For anyone out there, I'd definitely say education for yourself is key because there's nothing worse. I, I could not imagine somebody asking me a question and me not knowing the answer and telling them to Google it. There's, you've got to, as an educator, you've got to stay educated but if you want to progress, your skills got to progress as well. So keeping up to date, doing refresher courses, maybe, for example, I know a lot of master color experts out there that do not take advantage of Congress. And I'm like, it's, it's free. Like, it's part of the investment that you made. All you have to do, get on a train, pay for a hotel for the night, go to Manchester or London, Dublin, anywhere that you want to do it. And do it because all it's going to do is set you up for the year ahead by giving you an insight into new products coming out whether it's um the trends or competition it gives you a total insight into everything and it's the same with all courses regardless of what hair what kind of although i'm a weller girl i know that there might be a lot of hairdressers here that might not necessarily be weller driven but in general make sure that regardless of what product range you use or what product manager you use um, the support difference in education will be different, variant depending on the brand. However, there is always other ways of getting education. I mean, myself, all the education that I've done, I paid for myself because it's something I wanted to do for me, for me to progress and for me to know that I've done it and I smashed it and to give myself a little bit like, a bit more of a nudge towards and be proud of. So 
education for the forefront, not just as an educator teaching people and seeing that light bulb moment, but it's necessity for progression. No matter what you do, if you want to go from being a stylist to a manager, there are two very different jobs. Because managing yourself is very different from managing the team. I've been there myself. Um, it's, it's a very different role. So things like management courses and access courses that I went on when I was a salon manager totally helped me. So regardless of what field you're in, education for progression, oh my God, 100, 120 million percent. Yeah. It's, it's a must. And I think Definitely during, must. Like, I think during lockdowns, and think, like lockdowns and things like that, I think this is where the likes of those subscription services like Masterclass and like you're saying, it's soon online for us hairdressers and all these different things have, have done really, really well because actually people, even if they're not looking to change their vocation or change their career, they just want to be able to get other inspirations to help them progress within what they do as well. Um, yeah, I think I add on to that. I think an old thing of mine was if you if you stop wanting to learn something or learn about something, then it means it's not for you or yeah. it's not the right avenue. Because like you said, seeing from you and from Rob following his career his whole life, it's that want to know more that keeps you interested. At the moment you've learned everything and you think you know everything, where, where's the next thing to go? And I I'm think, sorry, the day that I think I know everything will be the day that I need to retire and oh I no God, longer exactly. deserve to be a hairdresser. Yeah. Honestly, that would be the day where I'm not allowed to touch any more heads of hair. No, yeah. I, like, I expect the um, all the, the stylists you've said or the hairdressers who are at the top of the game, they're still at the top oh, of the game. Still they're, 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 they're still learning. Hell yeah. It's, it's a community of sharing is really what... And that's what I've started. That's definitely something I've noticed in lockdown is that everyone is now coming together and it feels more like a unity, um, which is incredible to see. I mean, sharing information is how we evolve our craft and sharing knowledge and sharing it with like-minded individuals of all levels. Depend doesn't matter what route they want to go, whether they want to stay in the salon they're at and they only want to be a high, one level higher. Like, regardless of levels, from assistants to, to people that I know travel the world, everyone is coming together to almost like be that backbone of the hairdressing industry where everyone comes together and kind of coils together like the bones inside your hair and just structure in a solid form. It's wicked. <laughs> I love it. I, even I the analogy is still hairdressing. <laughs> Sorry? Even the analogy of community and coming together is still hairdressing related. Oh, hell yeah. We're the bones that build the industry, honey. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's also quite good. We're, we're the hair bones. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's also good is the fact that, like, everyone is also tra- wanting to find out about other things. Like, I would not know half the things or know any of these names from without having this conversation with you and Rob. So, like, there's some things I'll be looking at now and be going, oh, I remember that name. I, I'm going to find out about that name. And I think that is also good just in the sense of if you can cross over into different places it doesn't mean you have to do it but just having that like little knowledge of oh I know what that is yeah no definitely and again that takes that takes you on a whole journey with your brain as well and before you know it you start even if it's something that you halfway through reading you may not be fully interested in yeah there's something there that's spiking at you to read it because there's something in there that's relatable yeah exactly so Again, like that, although it may not be your anybody's particular field or if I'm reading something that's not my particular field, if there's something in there that sparks an interest, it's always a magic reaction to kind of go, oh, and why am I interested? Let's read into that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right, I honestly, I honestly, honestly, honestly cannot believe we are nearly at that time of the night where we've got a cool time. So we... (laughs) <laughs> we're doing last orders we're doing last orders so um we need to bash out a few questions on this uh section <laughs> so the first thing that i want to be able to ask you i just can't honestly can't believe how fast the time's gone it's just blown my mind like i thought i knew you it's because i've not saw you in ages isn't it <laughs> again <laughs> This is because I've not saw you in EG. That's what it is. Exactly, exactly, exactly. So, right, let's get down to it. So, um, every episode, I like to be able to ask our guests what they um, 
what their sense recommendations are. So using our senses, what do you recommend? Um, that, uh, things that you like that people can see, so watch or listen to or go and try as maybe a new dish or food or something like that. Ooh. Now, you're, now you're asking. What are you watching? <laughs> um, the listen to. You watching? When I think of listening to, I think go old school, take away the... Take away the the auto tune, take away, I know I love, I love decks and I love a bit of drum and bass, but it's all done in CD changers now. Do me a favour, go on to Spotify, that's fine, go on to your digital, but look, look up some stuff from maybe like the 70s, the 80s, or if you've got a family member who's maybe got a record player and some vinyl, it's going to completely transform the way you listen to music and how you hear the music, because then that becomes totally essential as to it's more instrumental and it makes your brain work in a completely different way. It makes you process the sound of music in a different way. So my main sense is probably the fact to listen in. Um, it's a massive form of communication, but it's also mad how it can transform you somewhere or take you to a memory or just give you an entire feeling through your body that you might get goosebumps because you might have heard that song so many times, but hearing it played on something different from being coming through the speaker on your TV yeah. or listening to a different genre, just try something really instrumental and just go with it and see how you feel after it. Because it, it, honestly, it's, that's the only thing I'd say about music. I love it. Definitely. Absolutely love it. I love it, love it, love it. You know, it's, it doesn't have to be specific, but go out there and try and find something different on music. Maybe this is something that we should um, uh, maybe should add into the links and things like that is maybe if you wanted to put together a little Spotify playlist of what you want to listen to, and then we can add the link into Ooh. the... Into oh the yeah, we're going to need to get a pineapple playlist now. We're going to have to do the pineapple playlist. Oh my gosh, right. This could be the next thing, Stu. This could be the next thing. I'm going to credit it to our uh, first contributor, which will be Maxine for a uh, for, yeah, Spotify playlist. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, cool. Um, so we'll give that we'll give that a go, Stu. Make a note, make a note. <laughs> okay, make a note. Make a note. That for me, that really that really does sort of wrap up today's uh, chat with Maxine. Um, I think, Stu, I don't know whether you would agree. I think Maxine is definitely somebody we should get back on again a little bit later on down the line, um, see how she's getting on, because I think um, there is still so many more layers to be able to uncover. Oh, yeah, you've got more coming that I can't tell you about, but... It's, it's going to be good. That's all I can say. If I if I've been stalking your Instagram correctly, then I'm waiting for the next hair color, the next style. I wanna. I'm waiting to see the next one from you. Oh, <laughs> I'm going to go through my archive now and make sure that I'm posting stuff that I've not posted in a while. Then <laughs> I've seen some stuff on your Instagram. And I'm like Rob. This is my. This is what you can do, and I'm like, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> so if you haven't. If you, what we'll do is we'll link it in the bio and everything. Go check out Maxine's uh, Instagram because it is good. Really, really good. So Maxine, Thank you. I'll pay you later. You just tell <laughs> everybody where they can go and find you. Give us the official. Where, where can they find you? Right. So you guys can get me on Instagram. It's at Maxine MacArthur here. Um, please excuse the profile picture. It's became a new favourite, although. I don't necessarily like the photo, but you're going to see a girl that looks like this with a mega cheesy grin like this. <laughs> um, and that's just a bit of me. Um, you can also get me on Facebook as well. So everything and anything that um, I usually share on Instagram, I share on Facebook as well. So you can get me if you just search Maxine MacArthur. And if you look for the girl from Glasgow, it will be myself. <laughs> Fantastic. Thank you so, so much for coming on today. It's been an absolute pleasure. We really do look forward to seeing you again soon and stay safe, stay staying and stay connected. Oh, thank you so much. Honestly, obviously, it's so lovely to have a catch up with you guys. And yeah, I can't wait to see it all finished now. I'm getting so excited. I can't wait to post it on, post it on social. <laughs> <laughs> but no, thank you. Honestly, it's been such a lovely chat of both of you. 
And my my brain waves are going. I might need to make a little mood board or something. Now I'm totally in the zone. Mm, um, love it, love it. So no, thank you very much for having me. It's much appreciated. And we had such yeah, a good love to come back on chat. another point. Interesting. Um, how chat so up. much creative inspiration is connected to music. So credit where credit is due, it was actually Maxine that gave us an idea for the Pineapple Playlist. Check out Maxine and all the previous guests' playlists on Apple Music and Spotify. Head on over to the Be More Pineapple Instagram page to get involved with this week's community challenge. Swipe across to IGTV section and you will find Maxine's and all the other previous challenges in the community challenge series. Get involved and don't forget to tag us in at Be More Pineapple. Also, at M Maxine MacArthur and use the hashtag PCC Inspo. We love to see and hear what you are all up to, so please tag us in on Instagram. It brings a smile to our faces here in the Fruit Bowl. If you haven't already, hit subscribe and don't forget to ring the bell so you always know when we release new content. Please like, comment and share so we can spread more joy, creativity, inspiration and motivation through the world. So until next time, sending you peace and love from here in the Fruit Bowl. Be kind, stay safe and stay connected.